One of the biggest problems I see in the golf swing is players want to keep that ball and the club in front of them. So naturally, I'm looking down at this little golf ball here and I'm thinking, man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to hit this thing hard and I'm gonna hit it toward the target, but I gotta keep it in front of me. I don't wanna turn away from the ball. I wanna keep my hands and arms and club, everything working in front of my body. That way I can keep everything in front where I can control it. Well, in reality, your club is pretty much behind your body almost the entire swing. Definitely in the backswing as you're starting down, as you shallow out that club, that thing is gonna be behind you and trailing along. The only time the club gets back out in your front of your body is after you've made contact and into the release. That's what we're gonna talk about in this video, how you can shallow it out, get the club behind you, just like you see all the top pros doing, and then not releasing until you get in front. That's gonna get you better lag, it's gonna get you more consistent contact, it's also gonna get you some more club head speed. Let's go and get started. Okay, so first let's go over this idea of what it means to have the club behind you. And the way I think of this is, if my club, I'm setting up here at a dress and my chest is facing out in front, you can imagine my shirt buttons are basically sitting right in front of me. So as I dress the club and address the ball, now you're gonna see that everything is in front of me at this point. My shirt buttons are facing forward, my club and the ball are right there in front of me too. Well, that's the last time in the golf swing that this really happens. After that, after you make this big turn and you start your downswing, everything's gonna be somewhat behind you. So let's go to the top of the swing and talk about the very first move down when you get a lot of lag and you really shallow out that club. So as I start my downswing, I'm gonna have a good angle of lag here and I'm gonna have this club really setting. Now, if I'm too steep here with the club more in front of my body, that's gonna cause problems. Because as I start to come down, if I was to swing straight down on that angle, I would hit somewhere between my body and the ball. That's way too steep of an angle. So players that start down steep or over the top, they're gonna to tend to stand up back out of it and try to flip this club back in front of their body. The correct way to do this is to shallow that club out so it's in an angle something like this. Now, if I was to just keep this same relationship with my club and my body, and I'm gonna go ahead and just stand back up, look how my club is way over here behind me. Again, my shirt buttons are in front of me, my club head is way back here. So essentially, the club is well behind or to the right of the center of my body. Now we kind of instinctively know that when we're getting lag, but the urge to cast, to get that club back in front of us where we feel like we can control it, is something that's hard to fight for a lot of players. So let's take it all the way back there again. There's that good lag angle. And again, if I'm just to straighten out and look at that, me standing straight up and down, that club's way back there. Now, let's take it to contact. As I come to contact, on average, PJ Tour players, their hips are gonna be about 45 degrees open, and their rib cage is gonna be about 20 degrees open, meaning that my shirt buttons would be facing in front of the golf ball at this point. So even at impact, when my club is here, since my hips and my shirt buttons or my shoulders are actually open, so if I take my left, my left arm off this club, you're gonna see my rib cage is pointing out here. It only looks a little bit square from the back angle because my arm is across my body. So if I go ahead and take that same angle again where impact is and I stand up, square up to the camera, again, my club head is back here. It's on the right side of my body. So essentially the entire downswing, the club is behind my body. It's shallowing out. And the good news with this is if I can keep the club behind my body and have that sensation that it is back there, then as I continue to rotate on through, what's gonna happen is this club's coming from the inside. It's naturally gonna swing back in front of me and it's naturally gonna let that club face roll on over and catch back up. So if I can get that club to shallow out and get behind me, now I can rotate on through and that club's gonna wanna catch up, gain some momentum and square up the club face. If I have the tendency to try to get the club working back out in front, I'm gonna tend to come steep over the top. Now the club's back out here in front of my shirt buttons and I'm gonna chop down on that. It's not gonna be very good. So that's the first key. We gotta get this thing shallowed out. The second key is, well, Clay, you know, I see that. Does that mean that I just get the club behind me spin open my body and really not use any hands and arms. Well, that's where I would disagree with that type of methodology. A lot of players will get that club shallowed out, but then they just try to drag it on through there. In reality, we are releasing that club. It's just happening in front of the golf ball versus before contact. So once I get this thing shallowed out, I get some good lag and now I start to rotate open from here. When my club is in this great lag position, I'm trying to get this club to turn up and in as hard as I can where I do wanna release the club and get it back out in front of me is just after contact. So as I release this club, now what we call a straight line release in the top speed golf system, my club head is pointing right toward the middle of my body again. So if I straighten back up to the camera, this is my release. Now it's caught up. So it went from here 
to releasing in front of my body. The faster I can get this club to turn up as I'm coming through there, the faster I can get that club to whip on through there, the more speed that I'm gonna have. So it's not just shallow the club out, drag everything through, hold off and rotate. It's shallow that club out, get everything rotating to get that momentum. And then as we're coming into contact, bam, get that to really whip and get that burst of club head speed at contact there. So now that we know what we're supposed to be doing, let's do a great drill to help us get this down. So piece number one, I want you to go to the top and pause. Number he here, I'm going ahead and letting my hips open. I'm letting my body start to rotate and I'm shallowing out this club and getting some great lag. Get in this position first. Make sure that this club is shallowed out. I don't want it to be steep. Piece number two, I'm going to come to contact and I'm going to have my hips. And if I take my left arm off my, my club, my shoulders are also going to be open. Again, that's where I want to be at contact. And then piece number three, now I've let everything release. Now my hips, my shoulders, my club, everything is pointing kind of in that 45 degree in front angle. That's when my club is going to catch up and really get it to whip on through there. So start out pausing in each of those positions, get in a solid 10 or 15 reps. Now you're going to start to build that muscle memory. It's going to start to feel natural to you after you do a few of these swings. Now let's take it from there. I want to go ahead and make it a little bit more of one fluid motion. We broke it down into chunks. So let's put those pieces together into one fluid move. So now I'm gonna go ahead and shallow that out. And from here, all I'm gonna focus on, once that club gets behind me and shallowed out, is getting it to my straight line release where it's all the way caught back up in front of me. Everything that happens in between just kind of gets in the way. So I'm gonna shallow that club out, get some lag, and then I'm gonna pause in my straight line release. How I'm gonna check that is if I imagine a golf ball setting about four or five feet in front of where I'm hitting my regular golf ball, I want my hips my chest, my shoulders, my arms, my club, all pointing to that golf ball. So I've got this lag and then I rotate open and release my hands of that golf ball. So I'm rotating and releasing at the same time. The golf ball I'm hitting actually just gets in the way. Once you've started to make that feel a little bit more fluid, now we're just gonna make some regular practice swings all the way back and through, getting those same sensations that we just had with these drills. And then finally, let's go ahead and give it a rip. I'm gonna put a little power in this and we'll see if we can get it over 300 yards and some pretty high club head speed. Shallowing that out, releasing that club, let that thing whip through contact. All right, may not have quite got to 300. Let's see what the, the numbers are. Hit it nice and straight though. Let's look at the flight scope here. Had good club head speed, wasn't hit the best. Um, got 296 on there, 277 carry. So didn't quite hit it as solid as I did, but you put those pieces together, work on that. You're going to get some great distance, some great speed and play a lot of good golf. So where do we take this from here? One of the pieces that I mentioned in this video was that release out in front. That's what we call the straight line release in the top speed golf system. If you can get that release in front, once you get that club behind you, man, the ball gets in the way, golf gets a lot easier. I'm going to play a preview of one of the best videos I have on this. Go ahead and click the i card up on the screen or the link down below in the description. You'll get instant access to that video. You'll get that straight line release in the front. And you'll be playing some great golf. Let's go and get started. A common misconception I see is that we want to create lag and we just want to hold that lag all the way on through contact and get as much lag as we can coming through contact. And that's simply not true. In the release section, we're going to talk about how to turn that lag into energy, how to turn that into speed so that you can hit it very far and do it like we mentioned without hardly any effort at all. And as we're coming through contact, we're going to fully release this angle as we're about 45 past contact. So if I draw, you know, a 45 degree angle, I should be looking at both arms nice and straight, the club splitting those arms so that by releasing the club, by getting this angle to release as we're coming through contact, that's what's going to create the speed. Our hands are moving a very short distance. Our club is moving a very long distance through contact and it creates that whip-like effect. Very different swings hitting the exact same position. So first let's take a look at Dustin Johnson releasing the club 45 past. And the reason we're going to see such similar or such different swings producing similar positions is that this is the real physics of how this has to happen. Here we're looking at Sergio Garcia. Again, we're going to see tons.